Hello everybody and welcome to your next Allegro HD tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be learning about different drawing primitives in, a, in, in, a, in the Allegro library. Now um, not much of the code has changed. Um, I know that I've taken out the string include. Um, everything is relatively the same. Uh, um, but for the for the declaration of the variables, I have a new thing called dimensions. And it works the same way as the position. The reason why I'm just doing it this way, you might be saying, oh, these are beginner programming tutorials. I thought it's supposed to be easy. Why not do the basic way, right? Well, I'm trying to do this so then you develop some good practices when you're um, programming. So then when it comes to the more advanced properties or the advanced stuff then you're already you already have been introduced to the advanced stuff so this way of declarating the arrays might be a little too confusing so I would just do an alternate way of uh, the alternate way of doing it or actually I'll do the old way because I want to make this tutorial short if you are confused about it then you can just refer to this it's the same thing or you can message me, PM me, or anything below, uh, or like comment below, and then I'll help you out. So, what is this dimension stating? The first cell is going to be storing the player number, just like the positions. Um, and then, and here, this is going to be storing the width and height. So, when this is set to zero, it's talking about the width, and when it's set to one, it's talking about the height. Easy enough. So now let's actually get into the drawing primitives. Okay? Well, um, there's a lot of different drawing stuff that you can use with Allegro, but I'm just going to be showing you the most common ones. And then you can look at the Allegro manual. I think if you type in Allegro drawing primitives in Google, then you'll get a list of all the different drawing commands you can do. But I'm going to be teaching you the most common ones that you will use in your programming life with Allegro. So right now, I replaced the text E out, and there's something called rect, okay? And it stands for rectangle. So it's a rectangle, but it's not filled, uh, not a filled rectangle. It's basically a wire frame of the rectangle, and you'll see what I'm talking about later. So if you look at rect, it asks for a bitmap, so that'll be buffer. Then it asks for x1, y1, x2, and y2 positions. And if you have taken math and you've done like triangles and stuff on Cartesian planes and stuff, then you definitely, or if you've drawn lines or whatever, you already know what x1, y1, x2, and y2 are. But just for the people that do not know what it is, then I, I have drawn up a little example in paint.net. Okay. So if you look over here, uh, this is our tr this is the rectangle we want to draw to the screen, okay? So in order to draw a rectangle on the screen, then the come then the program needs to know where to draw on the screen. Before, when you used to draw your text right on the screen, you used to specify an x and a y coordinate, and it would start drawing it from that coordinate right well when you're drawing uh, rectangles it needs to know where to start drawing it and where to end drawing it okay when you drew the text you when you specified the X and Y you were just basically specifying the X one and the Y one and then would draw the whole word right now we have to specify the starting point and the ending point okay so when you put X one Y one on the screen as below say this is the top left of the screen which is the origin zero zero now say we want to draw our our x1 is set to 300 and our y1 is set to 50 so what it would do it was go fit 300 spaces to the right and go 50 spaces down and then it would draw a point right there and say uh the second position the x2 the x2 and y2 the x2 was um 350 so that means the box was 50 pixels wide and the y2 was set to 
a hundred, meaning that it's fifty spaces down. So just to write this out to make it more clear, uh, let's choose a smaller font. So the box's position is oh, okay. I need to choose a different. Okay, the box's position is 300 by 50 this is the X1 and Y1 and the X2 and Y2 is is 350 and 100 so basically the first point is at 350 and the second point is at the coordinate 350 100 right so it draws a point here so it draws a point right here and a point right there so then when it draws those two points then it basically draws a vertical line from here um, a horizontal line from here and then a vertical line to there to meet it up and then it draws a horizontal line from there to here and from there up to here and then it ends up drawing your rectangle now this can be a little bit confusing to grasp but you'll understand the concept later on so basically right here we have to specify our x1 so our x1 is equal to the uh, the x position so let me copy that and paste that there the y1 is equal to the y position simple enough and then let's go to the x2 <coughs> now it's specifying the x2 position on the map right so we need to basically put the actual the position plus the width to get the x2 position on the map even though our thing is on um, 50 pixels wide we don't put 50 right it's not it's not gonna work like that we have to place the actual position on the map where the x2 is gonna be right and it is possible for the x2 to be smaller than the y and then the x1 but generally you don't want to do that but if you're working with like x and a or something like that and you're working with rectangles then in these parameters you would just specify the width and the height but with allegro you actually have to specify the actual point on the screen where x2 and y2 are so to actually set the point we have to do position 0 0 plus dimension 0 0 so we're just getting the we're getting the width right basically the width of the box and to get the height is basically the player we're talking about the vertical so remember we, we have to set this to 1 because we're talking about the y coordinates and then we have to get the dimension for the first player which is 0 and we have to set, and 1 is talking about the height so we do that to get the height of it and then we set the color of our box and then therefore we get a basically a wire frame of the box that we're about to draw now the next function is called rect fill and rect fill is the same thing it has the same parameters as rect in but instead the box is filled with the color that you specify at the end so if I was to run this program okay so when I move the box here as you see this one is not filled in with the blue color it's just a wired frame because it's just called rect right the second one is called rect fill and rect fill is filled with the color electric lime and then therefore you get in a filled in rectangle so whichever one suits your needs is the any one that you can use it uses the same parameters so now let's look at another um, let's look at other things that we can use other drawing primitives so let's look at line okay St all of them basically a lot of them use the same parameters oh sorry so it's asked for the same parameters as the as the as the rectangle sorry so we have buffer for the bitmap and then the same thing applies for the position maybe I should just copy it so all the parameters are the same I just want to show you what they do so I'll copy this copy these parameters and put line and then basically drawing a line is the same thing so once we go to I'll go to paint right now just to show you an example so if I draw a line well, that's not a very good line sorry if I draw a line right here on the screen the top part of the line will be so this will be X 
x1 and this will be y y1 and this point will be x2 y2 so then it starts the starting point to where to draw the line and the ending point where to draw the line so if I go back to my program and I run it then it draws a line from this point to that point I know it's a, kind of, it's a bit short but it's basically drawing a point from our x1 our x1 and y1 to our x2 and y2 point and that's it for the line and let me see how much more time I have okay um now there's another one the last one I'm gonna show you is circle so we got circle is a bit different and we got circle fill so let's look at circle f for a minute we, same thing it starts off with the bitmap we're drawing to which is the buffer and ask for the x and y position and the radius so it doesn't ask for x2 and y2 because um, it doesn't ask for x1 and y1 x2 and y2 is because when you're working with circles you don't need that because circles don't have edges and because they don't have edges or anything that requires something to point to then you don't need that so for the x we're gonna put position uh, 0 0 and for the y we're gonna put position 0 1 and for the radius if you have learned uh, if you haven't learned in geometry or anything basically the radius is if I draw a circle right here basically the radius is from the center of the circle to the edge of the circle and the radius is the same all around so let me just clarify this so if I was to draw a line say this is the center of the circle right here the radius is from here to the top of the circle and that's your radius right and that's the radius is the same around the whole circle so basically wants to know how big to draw the circle so the bigger the radius sorry the bigger the radius the bigger the circle will be so if I give it a radius of 50 and let's make the color electric blue then it'll be a big um, circle so let's just test this out so as you can see we got a circle with a radius of 50 and let's do circle fill right now so let's comment out circle and circle fill has the same parameters so buffer We'll put position zero zero, and if you're still not used to the position stuff, you can switch it to X and Y if you want. But I'm just trying to get you guys to get used to this, and we'll make the radius five, and we'll put electric lime, and let's test this out. As you can see, the smaller the radius, the smaller the circle is. And as you can see, this time it is as filled in circle. So that is it for this tutorial. Those are just the common drawing primitives that you can do. Other primitives you can use is just drawing a vertical line, horizontal line, etc., etc. And you can find those out on the Allegro manual on Allegro.cc. So hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And the next tutorial should be on sprites. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and bye.